Hey everyone. GM, y'all. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Hey, hi everyone. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> hey, hello. Hey, Fabio. Got a good mix. Give it a few minutes. I'll get started. Uh, I will share the link to the agenda here. If there's anything that you want to discuss that is not on the agenda, totally okay. Uh, it's a little bit of a rehash from last time. And some other things. All right, it's five after. Um, we can go through the agenda. I'm just going to share my screen for the sake of the recording. Um, can folks read this by chance? Yeah. Big. Too small. I'm going to call it big enough. Okay. Um, as usual, there's an antitrust notice. Um, we're recording the meeting. And if you have questions, you can use the hand raise feature or you can just come off mute. I don't think we're gonna have issues talking over each other today. Um, for announcements, I submitted the Q2 report uh, for Hyperledger Basu. So if you're interested in reading that report, um, you can, it's here. The kind of key points that they look to pull out are contributor activity, new contributor diversity, health of the project, direction of the project, all that good stuff. Um, so, uh, if you're interested in that, check it out. Um, there's more kind of forthcoming information around kind of what's next for second half, uh, at least from the consensus maintainers. So stay tuned when I have more of those I'll share. I think it's going to be this week, uh, what kind of our roadmap view looks like coming up. Um, so definitely want folks input and ideas. 
And if there's anything that you are interested in working on, or if you see uh, that's missing from the roadmap, again, this is just our view of the roadmap. Um, it's a collaborative process. Let me know, and we can kind of look, see what that looks like. But yeah, Q2 report is here. I don't know why this got indented. Uh, so check that out. On release updates, uh, we had a little bit of a snafu with 23.4.3. So we had kind of scrubbed that release and followed it on with 23.4.4. So the, this was primarily a bug fix point release on top of what we already have with some fixes for the transaction pool, um, some other items around sync and bonsai uh, and RPC. So nice big bug fix releases. Uh, and upcoming, we have 23.7.0, so our July quarterly release. Um, we are discussing, but not necessarily have any strong opinions about setting some new defaults alongside our deprecation items. Um, so let's chat about these really quickly. We're thinking about making the new layered transaction pool the default for mainnet. I can let Fabio discuss maybe the results of the tests and the bug fixes. Yes. So uh the new layer transaction pool is now running since uh months on our production validators and is doing fine uh also there are some just one uh issue that uh, i have found since now that was enabling the layer transaction pool on a new node, uh, returned an error, and this is fixed. Uh, so it should be fine for uh, the new quarterly release to have also be fixed. Uh, this also address some of the potential attacks on the transaction pool. So it's worth to uh, making the layer transaction pool the, the default and uh, keeping the, the old one uh, as that can be enabled by a property. So in case of something that is unknown at the moment, uh, some issue that are unknown, we can always uh, use the option to roll back to the previous one. Uh, but I said, we are running this since at least a couple of months on many different validator instances, also production without having uh, any, any issue. And as I said, probably in a previous uh, call, the comparison with the, the, the existing uh, transaction pool uh, is better in any metrics. So uh, it also uh, creates better and block with more value compared to the old one. Uh, Have yeah, we so, had? Yeah. Go ahead, Fabio. So for this, I'm uh, in. Uh, I propose to make this the default on the new uh, quarter. Have we had anybody testing this around private networks? I know there was some flags that needed to be set in order to deal with future non stuff. Well, I, I was using the service. Yeah, the uh, this is Matt. Hi there. Um, yeah, so we we've been running with the new lead pool in some of our performance tests. Um, 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 we did have to set the, uh, we had to increase the default uh, maximum number of transactions per sender from the default of 200. But but once we did that, um, it was behaving fine. It was stable. And, and once we increased that number, the performance was exactly as we had had uh, before we turned on the new pool. Um, so we've been exercising it a bit. That's probably only for a week or two. Um, yeah, so that that's the amount that, that we've given it given it a, a trial. That's good though, at least to note that it doesn't impact private networks too much without making note of that flag. 
So I'll, I'll yeah. Yeah. Kind of the idea of a service provider. You can install what did you have to bump that value to from 200? Um, well, I went from 200 to 500. Um, I, I we, we didn't spend ages sort of <laughs> binary chopping to see, to see at which point um, we we found a sweet spot. But um, it, it, putting it to 500 meant I think the bottleneck was back in our call because we, we've been exercising our own sort of um, uh, uh, platform. And I think for 500 meant it was back in our court uh, in terms of where the bottlenecks were. 200 was definitely like um, knocked maybe a quarter of our performance. We all obviously this was all with a single sender in our performance tests. Um, uh, I think the default we had with the previous pool, if I did, like, you have to do a bit of maths to work it out. I think maybe it's 400 on the previous pool when you set the maximum TX percentage per sender to point one which yes is the biggest is number 400, 400. okay we split this apart yeah so my guess is 400 would probably have been fine as well um, there is no issue in uh, uh, uh rising this value actually this is there not for performance but for the possibility to mitigate some kind of attacks on mainnet so on private it's network, if there is enough trust time. between the peers, yeah. it's fine it's to, to rise this even to higher value. Uh, I'm thinking of also changing this default when other uh, mitigation uh, have been implemented, will be implemented in the future. So um, this could be actually a reason to uh, higher value. So when we are, we trust that so some kind of attacks uh, are not, the not possible uh, or not the schemes, low risk. Those are not, we need ex loads of extra information, which we, I don't know if it doesn't exist in those schemes. So, yeah. so from oh. these same types. Mm, thanks, Matt. Uh, Appreciate that. And uh, sorry, on this, uh, yeah. there is also a good, very good yeah. suggestion yeah. from uh, uh, Adrian, Adrian Sutton. To avoid having this limit for local transaction, so local transaction uh, could fill the pool without any issue, uh, because uh, you basically you should trust local uh, transaction senders. Uh, so this this is a nice feature that we can add. And this will, uh, let's say, remove all the issue we had with uh, private network user uh, reporting uh, that the transaction pool is dropping some of the locally sent transaction. And then when I'm in the service mode, it's usually- Yeah, I, I could certainly see an argument for sort of something between those where, you might still want to to sort of limit the pool size for local transactions, but you might want a different limit for for remote. Because even with a local node, you might still have uh, multiple senders. So leaving it completely limitless for them to fill the transaction pool might might still be problematic. But having two different numbers to tune um, would still would give you back a bit of control um, for the the local and remote cases. It's got N, N okay, good point. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's definitely possible to add the flexibility of two local and remote mm. limit in a different way. Yes, thanks for the suggestion. Yeah, no problem. Cool. Any other comments here? Nope. Okay, let's keep moving on. Um, the other thing we toyed with was Bonsai as a default. I think this one needs a little more. We need to kind of figure out what that looks like in terms of existing nodes and changing things around. Um, but the goal is to move away from forest on mainnet. Um, so we might need a way to flexibly choose the storage format based on the names network you use, or if you use a custom Genesis, go to somewhere else. Um, but the problem is, is when you run Besu by default on mainnet or Gurley or the like, you start up with full sync, or excuse me, fast sync and forest, which is really bad 
UX. I'm not proposing that we change this in 23.7 necessarily, but we're going to do some exploration on the consensus software side um, where we, you know, we'll, we'll kind of do some digging and see what the impacts might be. And I'll probably share some kind of document. Um, but I presume that if we change the default, that won't matter too, too much because the folks using private networks are likely using custom configs or setting the config manually anyway. Um, but it might cause a little bit of friction. So we're just going to look, see what that looks like. Cool. All right, uh, kind of the meat and potatoes part of the um, the call. So I know we discussed last time the consensus mechanism, plugins, and modularity. Uh, the links that I have linked here are similar to the one last time. We have the modularity review. This is a um, this is work that Justin had done previously on the basically what we would need to get to a more modular client that has a lot of details as far as like overview potential approaches and whatnot uh this mirror board is what uh gary and i had worked on re regarding what are the components that we would need to potentially lift out um and the new page that i just created here last week is around kind of our approach and a working group my suggestion is we'll need, if we want to start working on this at some point soon, we will need to start a separate working group and not use these contributor calls to do uh, this. And again, I think our suggestion is to start with uh, the proof of work module, just because it's the most straightforward as far as validation rules and areas where it touches different components throughout the code base. Um, Diego, you were not available for the last call where we went over these materials. Um, the kind of overview that we did again was that we walked through this mirror board. It had a list of all the components, um, that we think would be impacted by this kind of work. And then two potential approaches on how we could do it. We're looking at the plugin system to drive a lot of this modularity work. Um, I don't know your familiarity with that system. Um, you know, would you want to work on this kind of working group? Uh, again, our, our, our thought process is to start with proof of work because it seems the most simple. That could be uh, a naive approach. Um, do you have any comments on this? <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think it's a great idea to start uh, with a working group. I, I didn't watch the the, the previous call, but I can do it on chat when we discuss about this. But yeah, thinking about the uh, plugin system, it sounds great. Yeah, I think that the that you can potentially skip the recording and go straight to the Miro and to this document here. They we just kind of walk through them. Um, so yeah, I think I know um, we also had interest from. Uh, Matt Whitehead and Nishal on this one. Do you guys think that starting a working group in the next couple of weeks, would you be able to attend and take, you know, we can lay out a plan? I think that there wouldn't be immediate action on pretty much anyone. We would kind of, like I said, that thing in its status, so ease out how we were going to do proof of work and then use that as a template for the other consensus mechanisms. I think, frankly, proof of authority will be the most difficult, uh, not the easiest. Service. Uh, well, yes, I certainly have availability in that sort of time frame, Matt. Yes. And yeah, uh, also like from me and George from Web3 Labs, we'll be working, uh, interested in, in getting involved in this. Cool. So maybe I'll do, um, I'll set something on the Hyperledger calendar for maybe a week or two from now, just to get us coordinated. I'll also share materials on the plugin system in general. We have a few workshops on like, how the plugins work, how to use them to extend the client and all that good stuff. It won't get us most, it'll get us kind of most of the way there. Um, and then I think, again, we can use that working group to lay out some action items, but I think it's just gonna have to be kind of hacking away at these. Um, consensus, uh, as in us, consensus software was more than happy to support this initiative. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend reviewing these. I think one, I'll, I'll something kind of closer towards the end of July will probably be uh, better for everybody. Just um, knowing some timelines. 
Justin, is there anything you want to add from your modularity review or the work that you did prior that might be useful context uh, going into those meetings? You know, I'm not sure about anything in particular that needs to be covered. Um, this is an idea that's been around for probably two years now and has made some progress, but not a ton. I would encourage anybody that's interested to just start a discussion. I'm happy to participate. This is an area of interest for me. Um, I did a lot of work on introducing Dagger into the code base, and I think that's probably going to be um, our preferred mechanism of achieving that interoperability with, with the modules as we define them. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I don't know that I have anything in particular. I'm trusting that everybody here is seasoned software developers and understand what uh, we mean by uh, inversion of control and modularity, et cetera, et cetera. So if, if, if those concepts um, we might be interpreting differently, just reach out to me and we can, we can uh, discuss that and make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, I think that's about it. Diego, do you have a question? Yeah, thank you, Justin. Um, yeah, I just want to know if uh, you were thinking also to move uh, proof of stake to be part of a plugin or something like that. I mean, everything will be a plugin. I mean, the consensus mechanism, every consensus mechanism will be a plugin. Yeah, so yeah, we're, we're kind of already there, honestly, with the way the engine APIs work. Um, you know, proof of mm. stake, is a notion that doesn't appear a lot in the BASU code base, honestly. Um, so that's definitely um, maybe a thing that we clean up a little bit, uh, but I don't imagine there's gonna be a ton of work. And I think the engine API is gonna end up proving pretty useful to other types of consensus as well. Yeah, and, and one thing we discussed last time was basically having like the default be proof of stake and still ship it with the same template process that we use for the other consensus mechanisms. It's just by default, we like include the proof of stake one and we also include the others, but you have to kind of swap them out essentially, if that makes sense. Our goal was to make it so that all of them could kind of use the same interface, um, but by default, they are basically pointed towards proof of stake. And then we have the three or the two other kind of plugin modules. And as you specify proof of work or proof of authority, then it just kind of plugs it in at you know configuration time and at runtime. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, I will um I'll I'll share an email. Mm, maybe not an email. I'll write something in the contributor channel uh, and I'll set a, a a calendar invite through the hyperledger basu list thing so the thing that uh, creates these calendar invites i'll set up a working group um i'll pick an arbitrary date or maybe i'll do some kind of poll in the discord but i'm thinking basically the last week of july if folks are around if not we can try to find another time there's no tremendous rush on this um but we will i'll try to work around people's vacations and summertime plans and whatnot but i'll i'll, I'll, I'll um matt i will share this in the the contributors channel. Awesome. Sweet. Um, the next one is around technical documentation quests. Um, we don't have Dana on the call, um, but another uh, kind of put out there to try to work with us on documenting the EVM library and some of those features there. We did have some recent document improvements in there. So I think we're getting started on that one, which is great. Um, as we modify the plugin system, I also want, or if we need to modify the plugin system, but as we use it, I wanna make sure that we're documenting pain points, challenges, and kind of approach from a developer perspective. I'd like to use this exercise with the consensus mechanisms to one, identify pain points with the plugins and two, identify like just kind of working process so that we can kind of revitalize the docs page. So I'm going to put my name next to this since I'll be following the um, the working group with consensus mechanisms. But again, the goal is to kind of have a new approach around plugins in the second half to try to encourage folks to look at the plugins for client modifications for other chains and other paradigms, whatever we need, as opposed to kind of forking Besu or doing some crazy stuff. But in reality, I think the thing is we need to 
make sure we have better documentation around that. So that's part of a kind of plug-in revitalization strategy that isn't much of a strategy as it is, let's start using the plugins ourselves and kind of dog fooding and then putting more detail back out into the world. Um, but, but anyway, yeah, I will be uh, probably following up with all those folks who use the plugins to get some more notes uh, going forward. And if you've used, if you have on the call, um, use these and are having questions or pain points, maybe what I'll do is create a new uh, page on the base wiki where we can start to collect feedback around the plugins. Um, that's actually a great idea. Plugin system feedback and pain points and details. Again, the goal is to get more people to try to use this as, as a modification point for Besu as opposed to using either another client or uh, trying to fork the code base. Um, the trial log shipping stuff, do we, uh, I think this might not, not necessarily as premature, but I think we should start to think about this as a part of our documentation around the plugin upgrades is what we can now do kind of with some of the state shipping stuff. Gary, this is more a question, not question, but this is more around you and Kareem's work. It's maybe putting some of that back in the documentation. Yeah, certainly. I think uh, anytime, one of the things that we should consider when we're developing plugins or, or extending the plugin API <clears throat> is uh, documenting specifically what we've what we've moved into the plugin API out of the main code base and you know the motivation, what what can be done with it, um, and just you know, kind of act as a a point of entry for for the plugin. Maybe we can do that directly in the code base that defines the plugin API via uh, Markdown, or maybe we need some external repo documentation. But uh, one of the things that kind of stands out is that um, we could arbitrarily move anything into the plugin API, uh, and we probably need to have some some design goals and documentation around that so that we can all be on the same page about what needs to be in the plugin and what the API could look like that way it does, doesn't end up like a kind of a random collection of interfaces we wanted to export. Maybe also uh, how the plugin is uh, communicating with Bezu, you know, to not have different way for the consensus part, another way for tree log shipping or something like that. Exactly, yeah. What would be, Sorry, can you like repeat that? Just the way the way that the actual API is interfacing with Besu, we need to make sure we're documenting. Yeah, uh, we had to specify the interface between the plugin and Besu, how the two components are sharing information or communicating. Uh, just so, just do not have someone using maybe a specific library and uh, another plugin is using another way to, to exchange some data and like that, it will be just random code uh, for each plugin, so. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can start with the trilog shipping as like a point that we can use to show like what we should be doing as far as updates as for the interface, any uh, design goals that like what are the design goals of expanding the interface to the trilogs um, and basically new documentation changes. I can also start some of this too as well and get some of the uh, you know, technical details from y'all. Okay, that's some notes there. Any other questions here? Cool. Um, yeah, more to come on this. I think it's just going to be a moving process, kind of a moving target. Now on to deprecation. So we for these don't necessarily all have to go into 23.7.0, but we're looking to deprecate three things, one of which is already committed. Um, so in 23.7.0, we're already committed to removing GoForm compatible privacy modes. Um, these are not even technically documented in the Besu docs. So we're hoping that no users are actually using this, um, but we will be removing the GoForm compatible privacy kind of interfaces in 23.7. Any 
Oh, I have that PL or uh, PR uh, link for that. Oh, perfect. Yeah, if you could pop it in the chat, I'll throw it down there. Oh, here we go. Is it a, uh, yeah, 5607. Amazing, thank you very much. Um, also database version zero. So we currently have versions one and two, one being forest, two being bonsai, if I have it correct. Um, and database version zero is kind of a really old legacy uh, version that we no longer use. Uh, and this is a PR to clean up that uh, version zero alongside some other stuff. Uh, there is also other modifications in this PR. So maybe I will split uh, this PR into two in order to have only the version zero deprecation in on one PR. So it will be cleaner. Gotcha. We're also looking to remove world state pruning on forest nodes. This one might be more of interest to folks on the call on the private network side because the removal of this this feature never actually was thoroughly tested and thoroughly worked super super well um but are people using this on their network you can't really prune like the qbft ibft2 stuff from what i've gathered so i don't think any of you are using this but i'm not sure and if we just start calling this not currently no i can certainly say we're, we're not Awesome. This also uh, is connected to making a bonsai the default because if you want uh, to save space, if your use case is to save space, then bonsai is the preferred solution. Uh, while if you use forest, you probably want to have also the history and so uh pruning should not be uh, an option for you and i haven't seen uh recently any discussion about this feature on uh, discord also so i hope we can deprecate for deprecating to make maybe if someone is using it but we are not aware uh what do you think we we can put a warning uh, or be more aggressive on that let's say if you want to enable pruning you have to pass twice the option something like that or otherwise uh, yeah we have already this this yeah, we, notice, we, already, yeah. we already have a deprecation notice i think it's okay to Okay. And disable pruning will not work the, the database or something like that. So I think we can be aggressive and just uh, delete uh, we, we can put uh, uh, in the next RC if we, if there are, uh, if there is agreement, we can put a warning if you have this option enabled. So notify by warning that this is deprecated and will be removed in a future quarterly release. Hmm. Okay, yeah. I, I, th I can propose a, a, a PR for that to add the warning and to deprecate the, add deprecate annotation to the futures. Uh, to the to the future uh sorry future features sounds good Thanks. looks like we have agreement on pushing these all into 23 7. and again we'll have release candidates so as you test the release candidate if there's any weirdness in either tooling or anything else just let us know and we can always revert uh we can always revert them or just have a discussion and figure it out. Could you remind me what the tentative schedule is for 2370? Yeah, so since we had a um since we just had 2344 like last week, our goal would be a week probably to start burning either the week of sorry, the Friday of next week. Um 
the timing is bad with some with ETCC and some other stuff. But again, we it's a release candidate, so we can just kind of put it out there and see. But I'm, my presumption would be that we would cut something next Friday, Gary. Perfect. Stay. Just gonna cut this in here. Burn in Friday the twenty first. Mm. What's this Friday? The eleventh. Yeah, it's the twenty first. Awesome. Okay, the last thing is checker. Uh, Justin, this is all you. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. So I don't know if folks have been following along on a very large, very long lived feature branch for EIP 4844. Thank you, Matt. Um, <clears throat> but we're introducing some, you know, a whole lot of new stuff for the new feature. And one of the things we have now is a data gas, new type of gas which is typically represented with the 64-bit integer. Um, Dano makes a point in the PR where he's saying that, um, you know, he got a lot of performance improvements in the past by switching to primitives from more strongly typed things that extend byte arrays uh, via 2any. <clears throat> so he kind of raised this as a performance concern. I raised it as a, um, you know, the counter to that is a readability concern where when the, excuse me, <clears throat> When the reader has a long that they're looking at in Java, they kind of assume that it's a signed long, right? And there's no good way to communicate to them that you know they shouldn't add them together, they should be using bitwise operators instead, et cetera, et cetera. He suggested as a compromise this thing called the checker framework. Um, I don't know if anybody has any experience with this. It has been around for quite some time. It's been around for over 10 years. It is active. Um, there are regular releases and commits to it. And so I don't really see a problem with introducing this to the code base. Um, I just wanted to you know, bring it up on a call so everybody else had a chance to weigh in, um, maybe express any past experiences with it, et cetera. But what this would allow us to do basically is to treat certain logs as signed, excuse me, unsigned uh, integers, right? And uh, use annotations on them to make sure at pre-compile time that uh, we're not making any um, unsafe assumptions about what's in that um, 64 bits. So questions, comments, concerns, open discussion, et cetera. Is that like a static analysis type tool or how, is, how would we integrate that in with the existing CI and tests. I think it's like error prone where it's um, a, a set of annotations. Sounds good. I mean, sounds uh, uncontroversial. Is there uh, any, any downsides to it? I've only been reading about it, so I'm not sure, but I haven't read any. Um, well, it's all possible to. To have a, a PR against the, the current state of the EVM just to see how that will look like uh, before introducing this PR? Absolutely. I, I would not do it on this PR, I don't think, because this PR is massive. Okay. So, yeah, I, I would definitely want to do isolate it somewhere else and not include it here. So, you're, we're great. talking about using the checker framework on Dano's already uh, committed work using yeah. primitives in the EVM, right? Exactly. Yep. Awesome. That is a little scary to me. So uh, I, I think checker framework sounds awesome. Great. As ever, feel free to reach out with, to me with questions, comments, or concerns. And I think that's all I needed. Sweet. I think we're ahead of time, which means we have open discussion. Um, any topics in this kind of open forum thing? We could review the metrics, but I don't really want to. 
uh, at any time you can review these metrics. They just show that people are using Besu, which is crazy. Nice. Uh, cool. This is some fun data. I don't really know. Um, any topics, any, any open topics we can also give. Uh, to yeah. Uh, so I have like, uh, so we are working on this benchmarking performance of PSU using Caliper. So this is a mentorship program, Hyperledger mentorship program. So basically one of our mentees working on it. So basically what we want, or uh, we need to, you know, add, a uh, few of uh, workloads into Caliper and then benchmark, uh, PSU using it. So we did it and, uh, the performance is not that great uh, right now what we are getting. So let's, I just wanted to, you know, uh, get like, if you are doing this performance uh, like regularly, so is there a, a suggested setup or something that we should stick to? So basically we are uh, focusing on uh, this QBFT and IBFT. Um, so we, we didn't like um, do this kind of load testing on, especially on the private networks. We, um, like at some period, we tried to um, implement the caliper tests, but we had some some issues, and uh, then we just uh, just gave up. But um, I, I'm definitely interested what what are like the results you had, and uh, and see if I if I can help. And um, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's because our focus um, like the last mouse was was on on mainnet. Um, so yeah, if you have some results on on like on private networks, um, yeah, I can take a look and and see if uh, we can find something. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. So yeah, uh, like uh, with the result about the report, uh, result and report, we will be sending a mail then or uh, in the yeah, Besu mailing list. Whatever we find, I would suggest Discord. Um, yeah, uh, I think Discord is better. Okay, yeah. I think there's probably some some good guidelines around uh, hardware spec performance. Um, there's so, some some basic things that um, might you may or may not be uh, using NVMe, for example. Um, you know, the different uh, JVMs and uh, memory management options that are present. I'm not sure if you have looked into the performance tuning guide. That we have, I believe, on the the wiki currently, but that might be a good place to start for uh, uh, the baseline uh, test harness for Caliper. Okay, yeah, we'll look into that then. Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, we find something very interesting, but we like we 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 haven't enough time like to dig into the details and, and like do um, a real implementation. I just did a poc. Uh, so if I remember correctly, it was on QBFT. And um, so this is more related to block processing. Uh, and we found that uh, the block is actually processed three times. Um, so like each time we import a block, uh, we do it three times. So we are doing exactly like the same. We are executing exactly the same code, the same transactions, but, but three times. Um, so. Uh, I did a POC, like a proof of concept on like just cache some data and avoid doing it uh, three times. And um, and we had like good improvement. Instead of um, processing three times, uh, the block was processed only twice and we had like 33% improvement. So if you guys like, have some performance issues, especially on, I would say, block processing. Uh, I can share some some data and some insight on, on that part. If if you have some, yeah, uh, that will be great. Point, yeah, yeah, some point we to to work on that. Yeah, yeah. If you could share a PR or POC documentation, something. Okay. Yeah, that would be huge. I know that we did a lot of investigation around performance work that definitely trickles over to the proof of authority side, but we didn't have time, like Amazian said, to like focus on those improvements. But, you know, would if, if you could like take those PRs and kind of run with it, that would be great. And I think that we should definitely collaborate on that stuff. Yep, yep, that'd be great, yeah. 
Sweet. I'll include the PR when I get it. <clears throat> Any other questions uh, here, folks? Comments, concerns? Awesome. All right. I think we can call it there. Um, thank you very much. I will share the notes in the contributor channel. Um, and we can, you know, have any follow ups there. There's a lot of good stuff that came out of this. To reiterate, I will send a little bit of like a not really a poll, but like I'll, I'll suggest some times where we can have the working group meeting around uh, modular consensus. I'm again looking at the last week of July as our likely starting point. If that doesn't work for you all, maybe we can push into August. Um, but yeah, there's no giant rush. And we'll do that in Discord. And please review the materials um, that we've shared. They it's a good starting point. And I'll dig up the I'll dig up the plugin system workshop that's been done uh, and share that as well. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Chat. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. I think. I think.